Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Yup from Income Tech Design and in today's video we're going to have part 2 of the tutorial series on the car rental website. Uh, today we're going to focus on making the styling for one specific post type that we made in the previous video. Uh, we're going to style how the car looks. We're going to display it on the website. So we're going to make one singular car uh, based on the post type we made. And we're going to create the listing page as well so we can list out multiple cars and also display three or four cars based on a slider on the home page of our website. So that's three main things that we're going to handle in this video. I expect it to be a longer video than usual, but we'll see how it turns out. Um, stuff uh, such as uh, Jet Smart filters and uh, WooCommerce and actually making the booking or the reservation for the car is something we're going to handle in further episodes. For this, we're specifically going to focus on bringing the post type to the website and making it interactive with dynamic content that we made in the previous video. So without uh, further ado, let's get straight into this video. Okay guys, so uh, I'm looking at the website right now. Uh, this is the demo from Crocoblox, so uh, this is what we're going to create. Um, essentially, we're going to use everything that you can see on this page and we're going to implement it on our own website. Uh, I already made a page on what we're actually going to build. As you can see, it's a literal copy of what Crocoblock has already managed to do. I already built this for the website, but we are going to rebuild this uh, on the new website. Um, and I'm going to pick some styling from here so we know exactly what to do. So um, what I did in my dashboard is last time um, we created the car post types, right? So what I did right now is I added four cars. So let me open up one. We have four cars. We have the title here and everything filled in that we covered last video. So I just took an image and I also had an image gallery with, uh, yeah, with, with the Croco block images. As you can see, they're similar to these ones. I literally just copied them and downloaded them and uploaded them back again. So um, I have to take credit or no, Crocoblock takes credit for this. Uh, I don't own these pictures whatsoever. They're from Crocoblock. Okay, so without further ado, uh, let's uh, start creating the, uh, the single post uh, types. So. What you should do is you should add some cars first, maybe three, maybe four. Um, that way, when you're going to design the cars or the singular car post type, you can actually see how it looks like. So first of all, create a couple of cars. Doesn't matter if they're relevant, yes or no, just add them, okay? So once you've done that, uh, you go underneath Elementor to Templates. And what you do is you click on uh, Add New, and we're gonna select a single post, and I'm gonna call this car no, singular singular car that's what I'm gonna call the singular car so let's create the template all right so it's gonna come up with some blocks that we can use the basically made by Elementor for creating blog posts we're not gonna worry about that we're going to create everything from scratch so the very first thing that you want to do is go to the bottom at the left here, go to settings and then click on page layout and make it a full width. Now before publishing it, we're going to save the draft. So now it's a full width. So let me reload this page. Sometimes it might interfere with your web, uh, how your website is built. Mine was already in full width. Uh, if yours wasn't, you need to reload in order uh, to see the changes. Okay, so let's take a look. What do we have here? We can see that we have a gray background and we have a column here that's a bit centered to the left and that's because we have the booking system on the right here we're not going to cover that in this video we're just going to focus on the specific post type right so we're just going to cover the left part of the screen here so this is a column it has an image and it has some data now how are we going to get this data well let me show you first of all we need to create uh, the main column so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a section with one column and I'm going to make the height, minimum height to, let's say, 600. And instead of one column, I'm actually going to make two columns. And I'm going to click on the six dots at the top, and go to structure, and then select the 66% and the 33%. That's the offset that I used for this one as well. Now this background color, uh, I'm going to switch between these tabs a couple of times, just to pick over the styling. So I have some add-ons installed. 
color picker eyedropper allows me to copy a specific color from my web page and paste it directly into my own. Uh, so I'm gonna do that. Let's say the background color is gonna be this gray color. That's an add, not a hashtag. There we go. As you can see, we have a gray background. It might be difficult to see, but it, I can tell you it's there. So now, what do we do? The left column, we're gonna click on the column options at the left top side. And we're gonna click on style, background type, and we're gonna make it white. There we go, now we have it white. Now, what do we want to achieve here? We can see that we have an image and we have the title and the rest of the data. So this is typically going to be an intersection with an image on the left and the rest of the data on the right. So let's drag in the intersection here and let's drag in an image. Now what we can do here is we can, on the image, you can see the dynamic tags on the left side. So you wanna click on that. I wanna scroll down to Jet Engine, as you can see right here, and you click on Custom Image. Now you click on the wrench icon at the left, and then you can select the field for this custom image. Now this is going to be the car's main image. So I'm gonna select that. Now you might not see anything here, that's totally fine. There's just one setting that you need to enable. You need to go to Settings, Preview Settings, and then it says Preview Dynamic Contact as, Content As, sorry. You click on Car, and then you select a specific car. What did I use here? That's the Infinity Car from Code Block. So Infinity, there we go. We click on Apply and Preview, and the image is going to load in. As you can see right here, there it is. Right, awesome. Now, we need to get the title. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag in a title. All right, I'm gonna copy this styling, so I don't need to do the styling that much. Paste style, there we go. If you're wondering what the styling is, it's pop-ins with a size of 30 and a weight of 300, uh, 600, sorry. And then a, black, or a dark blue color. Now what we do here is we click on content and we can leave this as it is. But we need to click on the dynamic tags here and then scroll down to Jet Engine, click on custom field and then the field is going to be the car title. And as you can see the title automatically appears and there it is. Literally it's as easy as that. It's, it, it's really not that much work. Now let me copy another uh the, the build here now right so i'm not gonna copy paste it i'm just gonna show you how i do it and just copy the styling over because i'm not focusing on styling in this video just on the functionality so i'm gonna drag in another heading and paste the style in there all right if you're wondering what this style is it's a poppin 16 600 with a light gray uh, color now again click on the dynamic tags button scroll down to custom field and select the build here and there we go, we have 2014. Now this one is a bit more difficult. As you can see, we have an icon, we have passengers, which is some sort of a title, and we have the content. Now, since we already used a intersection, we cannot use another intersection within this intersection. What we need to do is we need to come up with a clever way of making sure that two of these icon boxes can fit next to each other. So first of all, let me drag in an icon box. Uh, as you can see, it's quite difficult to get it below the 2014. My Elementor is now doing some random stuff. So what you can do is just drag it somewhere, click on the navigator, and then just drag it wherever you want it to be. Now I want it to be below the heading, so let's put it there. Now it's below the heading. Cool, so I'm gonna click away the uh, navigator. All right, so now what do we want to do here? We want to see the passengers is going to be static. The icon is going to be static. The only thing that changes throughout the different cars is going to be the number that's here. So that means that we can basically just find an icon. I'm gonna go for user. The title and the description is going to be passengers. That's always going to be passengers, right? Uh, let me make this a little bit smaller for you guys so you can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, let's make this a bit smaller. There we go. And the description 
you can see we already have a dynamic tags here. So what you do is you click on it, go to custom fields, click on the field. And what do we want to have? We want the passengers. So we're going to click on passengers and there it is. Now, if you're wondering how you'll get it on the left side, uh, as we do here, basically what we've done or what I've done is the icon position. I've set it to the left and the styling, go to content and then you can click the vertical alignment to be the middle. That's for the uh, icon. And then the alignment on the left side as well. We can also put it on the right or the middle, but I prefer it on the left side. Now let me copy over this styling. So it's faster styled. Now what I've done here, as you can see, now it automatically does this for me. It automatically crops it to the half. So what you can do, let me revert this change. Now it's full width. You need to go to advanced and then you can click on let me see, where is it? Position, width, here it is. So advanced layout and then width. What you can do is you can set a custom width or full width or inline. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the custom width for 50%. And now with scaling down our uh, font, we can actually make two of them. So if I duplicate this one, it's actually going to be pasted next to it. So now we have 50%, 50%, in total 100%, meaning that this column is now filled. So if I duplicate this box, it's going to be put below it. All right, cool. So now we have passengers. What else do we have? We have doors. So I'm going to click on here, select the door open. And instead of passengers, I'm going to have doors. And then I click on the wrench, passengers, that's going to be doors. All right, cool. Let's duplicate this box and see what else we have. The consumption. Now for this well, what do you have here? We have a gas pump. So let me see a gas pump. Uh, and the doors, that was going to be, what did I say? Consumption. Right, did I misspell that? I don't believe I did. Mis uh, consumption. Click on the wrench and then click on consumption. And it automatically fills in the data for us. Really cool. Now, if you go to style and you click on content, you can actually edit the description, which is going to be the value here. So you can add it your starting right here. I have a 16400 poppins with a dark blue color. Cool. So right now I'm going to save this draft and this is what it looks like so far. Quite nice already. So let's see what else we can do. What we have here is we have an overview and a description with some images. But we also have a divider. So basically what I've done here is you can search for a divider, drag an inner, and as you can see, it's already bugging out sometimes, but luckily now I can drag it below. But sometimes you can drag it below. What you need to do is click on the navigator and just do the trick that I just did. Just drag it below the element you want it to be. You see now it's below here. I don't want that. I want it to be outside of this column. Can I please get you out of sight of here? Uh, there we go. Let's go behind, below the intersection. There we go. That's the correct place. And for the styling, we also only need to make the opacity a bit lower so it becomes automatically a bit more gray. I'm just going to copy and paste the styling again. It's almost the same. You can barely see the difference. All right, cool. So now, we have another static uh, title. So basically all you need to do is drag in a heading, say on the left, and I'm gonna say overview right here, overview. And I'm gonna copy over this styling based style. There we go. Basically I just made it a bit smaller. It's 21 on size and 600 on weight with poppins as a font and the same dark blue color. We're constantly copying over HTML objects, but what you also can do is you can also just uh, s uh, save colors or save styling. So what you do is whenever you have a nice color, for example, this blue one, you can click on the plus here and then add it the new color or add the new color. So let's say new color, create, and if you click here, there is the new color. Well, I already have that, so I'm not gonna select that. It's basically the same for me, it doesn't matter. Okay, cool, so now we have the overview. What else do we have? Exterior color and we have some value below it. Now, we have four items next to each other and then four items below that. How can we achieve this? 
really easily we basically just have to drag in an intersection add four columns and then the first title is going to be a header uh, I'm gonna make this way smaller let's just put this at 18 maybe now as you can see it's not quite the right position right there's some spacing on the left here so how can you achieve this or how can you uh, set this right click on the column go to advanced and get rid of the padding because Elementor automatically puts some padding in the boxes you don't want to have that now everything is lined up correctly all right so I have my exterior color so let's type that in here exterior color all right and then we want to have did I mistype that? I think I did. Exterior color. Oh, I did. There, exterior color. Uh, all right, doesn't matter. Now what I can do is I can simply duplicate this one. It's going to be copied and paste below and selected that dynamic tag as a custom field for the exterior color. There we go, and it's going to say black. Now there is some, some spacing below these two, as you can see. So basically what you need to do is just click on advanced on the bottom one, uh, unlink them. I always use EMs. I really like to work with EMs instead of uh, pixels and just set the negative one. And there we have it. So I'm gonna copy over to these styles because they look quite nice. Base style, copy, base style. And that same one for the overview which I believe I already done. Yeah, I already did that. All right, so if you're wondering what this style is, it's 14400 on poppins with a light uh, gray or dark gray color. Sorry, excuse me. All right, that's the exterior color, right? So basically, instead of copying all over these elements, I'm just gonna delete the other columns here. And I'm gonna duplicate this three more times. Duplicate it, duplicate it duplicated so now we already have the styling and the padding and everything set up the only thing we need to do is change the values so this is the interior color interior color and we just have to select the value interior now I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the rest of these as well it's basically just the same procedure um, and if you want to have four more on the bottom, the only thing you have to do is duplicate duplicate this uh, intersection and give it some spacing on the top. So it looks quite nice. So I'm gonna fill these in and I'll be back in a second. All right, so I'm back. Um, I added it all or I added all the values. So now let's see what else we have. We have another divider with a description, a description title and some images. Really easy to set up. I'm gonna copy over my divider. It's going to be pasted inside a column. I don't want that. I want it to be outside of the column. Let me drag that here for a second because my microphone is heavily in the way. Uh, let me drag that outside of the intersection collapse that there we go let's get rid of it all right so i'm gonna say i'm gonna have an offset of two at the top and two at the bottom all right cool that looks nice now description which is copy over this overview let's put i'm not typing I somehow duplicated this element I don't want to do that uh, what did I say description description just drag in the text editor here click on dynamic tags custom field description where is it description there it is and the description is pasted in there now I want to have another styling and the styling for the ones wondering is Poppins 14400 with the same dark color as I used on the rest of the elements. Cool. So now we only have one thing to do, and that is having the images here. Now, what did I do to achieve this? There is something called the image gallery. It's a basic gallery. 
I'm gonna drag it in here. And the only thing you have to do is you have to click on the dynamic tags here, click on Jet Engine Gallery, click on the wrench, and select Image Gallery from Cars. So click on it, and as you can see, they are being inserted. Now they're not quite the same as we're seeing here, and why is that? That is because we still need to do the styling. So I'm gonna say that I want to have six columns here, or maybe five columns. Five columns, yeah, I wanna have five columns, that looks nicer. The link is gonna be the media file, lightbox, I'm gonna keep that at default. What you can do is set the spacing custom to zero, so you actually know that they have no spacing. Border type is zero, and the caption is not relevant for us, so I'm just gonna click hide in case something might happen in the future with some updates. Uh, that they have a default caption for like I don't know I'm just gonna hide it for now because I don't need it okay cool so um, now what we can do is we can just tweak this around a little bit so I'm gonna click on um, the entire column as a whole and I want to add some padding because you can see there is very little spacing here and also at the top and at the bottom there is no spacing whatsoever because uh, we didn't add any so let's change that First of all, I'm going to click on the column as a whole and click on the padding because that's the spacing on the inside. Uh, I also dis uh, described this in my uh, very basic Elementor video. You can check it out. I'll put the link in the description below. So I'm going to say a padding of two. That's going to shrink down our content to a box, as you can see with two EM padding. Now I also want to have margin at the top and at the bottom. So let's say two as well at the bottom as well too and margin if you don't know is the outside of the element the spacing on the outside while the padding is on the inside of the element and there we have it that's our car literally it's nothing more than that it's really super simple to set up um, yeah so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna publish this across every car so we're gonna click on add condition include not all singular but I want to have cars Click on cars, select all. Uh, you have this for another template. Okay, I need to delete this template. Um, but we're gonna click on cars and then we're gonna click on all and we're gonna set save, close. And let me quickly delete the other template that I just made. Let me delete this one. All right, cool. So now if you go to cars and I click on a specific car, you can see that it automatically picks our dynamic data and to show you that it's actually really working i'm going to select another one the honda accord which is also from crocoblock i'm going to click view and it works in precisely the same way we have the images we have all the all the, all the dynamic stuff you see 2016 the colors change um let's say say the hyundai everything worked as well this one doesn't have any images because i didn't add any to them as you can see didn't add any images. I don't believe it has on Crocoblock as well. But it works. It works precisely as we want it to. And it's amazing. So you can click on the images, you can scroll through them. It's really amazing. So that's how we do it. That's how I have achieved it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the listing. It's going to be a short one. I'm not going to add it in this one because it's going to be too long. Quick note, in the future I am working on a, uh, uh, on a course on uh, how to use Elementor from scratch with custom post types, um, so stay tuned for that, I'll keep you posted along the way. Uh, for now, I hope you enjoyed this, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them, just put them in the comment section or go to my website incontactdesign.com and send me an email and I'll try to reply as quick as I can. So thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.